Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Amen. John and Louise Breckley had been married for 60 plus years, and they had received the very difficult news that week that John's cardiac health was deteriorating rapidly. The doctors were gonna try some things, but it was pretty clear that John's death was closer than any of us had imagined. So they asked me to pray with them. Sitting side by side, these two dear people who had shared the majority of their time on earth in a life together, held hands, both hands of both people while we prayed. Now, John and Louise both had very crooked fingers bent by arthritis in the passage of time. And because of that crookedness, their fingers didn't follow predictable lines. They took unexpected turns and angles. And as I looked at these two people's beautiful hands, clasped together in love and in prayer, their fingers formed an intricate knot. I couldn't tell where one person ended and the other began. Unity, oneness with God. It's the place where all the mystics meet, where particulars of faith and doctrine just drift away, where notions of ego, productivity, correctness, all dim. And we simply sit with and surrender to the presence with which we share our truest nature. I am the vine, you are the branches. There's no separation there. You already are exactly what you seek. Connected, nourished, God coursing through you and through this part of the body of Christ like chlorophyll and sap, light, and elements of the universe converted into fruit. That, my friends, is very good news. It also may sound strange, maybe a little bit different than your experience. There are some things in our human condition, all of us, that prevent us from living into that reality of our union with God. One of them is ego. And I don't mean just that puffed up part of us, though that's certainly what ego looks sometimes. But ego is really concerned with what other people think of me. So uh, it's both, I am great, and oh my gosh, I have failed miserably. That's all ego. When we're heavy into our ego space, we want to achieve. We want to have approval. We want to be good and perfect and admired. Wow, look at all those beautiful grapes over there at St. Simon's or in your home. And ego, couched in religion or religious activity, is the sneakiest. We're fine with this talk of union with God, but we want to achieve this. We want to do all the right things so that we can earn and accomplish that union, so that we can produce that fruit. But in God's love and wisdom, it doesn't work that way. Father Richard Rohr writes, the biblical revelation is about awakening, not accomplishing. It's about realization, not performance. We already have what we seek. That presence, that union has already been generously given, woven into our created and embodied selves. And the spiritual path to which we have set our feet is about our eyes being continually opened to that bedrock truth. Now, I believe that bearing fruit is important, and scriptural, scripture certainly attests to that in the spiritual life. And it's important to us as individuals, and it's important as a community. So please don't hear me wrong. Fruit is the whole reason the vine and the branch exist. But the branch doesn't 
screw up all of its strength and squeeze out some fruit, the branch simply exists and abides where it is, lives in that connection. And the fruit is a natural outgrowth of that home in and nourishment from the vine. The branch is entirely surrendered to what it is, part of the vine. It's a humbling thing to simply receive the grace of God rather than work for it. A humbling thing to see that it flows through us and that the yield of fruit that results is not our own. Our ego is one barrier to this awakening, to our union with God. So are our expectations. How many times have I said to my spiritual director, if I were doing this right, wouldn't it look like X? You know, wouldn't it be easy? Wouldn't I feel more peaceful, have less pain and less fear? That's what this faith thing should look like in my life. Or maybe we have expectations about what that looks like as a community. If we were doing this right, wouldn't people be streaming into our building? Wouldn't our congregation have huge attendance and lots of money? Wouldn't our classrooms be brimming over with children? And our youth group be the place where all the cool kids want to hang out? Now that would be fruit, right? And in addition to all those expectations, there's this ominous sounding detail in the gospel this morning. Those branches that don't bear fruit are cut off. Even the ones that do bear fruit are cut back. I better bear some fruit in my life or God's gonna do something bad and you know, I guess I'll deserve it. We better bear some fruit as a church or we won't survive. Again, I'm all about bearing fruit. But that fruit comes not from us screwing up all our strength and pushing it out, but instead it is born as we are caught up in God's work throughout all creation. God is lovingly moving and acting in the events of history and in the events of our lives. There is power, peace, and home for us and for our world, not when we try and force God into our notions of what should be, but when we awaken to this reality of our union with God. Jesus' words remind us today that that vital fruit is born when we simply surrender to God coursing through us. That fruit, whatever it looks like, is the consequence of our lives being caught up in God's walking with creation. Even those branches that are cut off can be surrendered. What if in self-offering and surrender we were to say, yes, prune me, cut me off, and use me for something, for fuel, for light, for warmth, if you wish. Everything I have and everything I am is yours, and I return it to you. Give me only your love and your grace, and that will be enough. Our brother Jesus says, abide in me, stay with me, live with me, wait with me, and I will stay and live within you. While our ego and our expectations would have that be a transaction, Jesus is clearly telling us it's a relationship. Throughout the Gospels, Jesus speaks of God's kingdom, God's commonwealth, not as something we achieve or build or create, but as something we receive or enter. God is already lovingly active. God's divine accompaniment, God walking alongside every person you encounter this week is the starting place. It is the vine of which you and I are branches bringing to it fruition God's commonwealth. And we get to be a part of that. I am the vine, a sonnet. 
by Malcolm Geet. How might it feel to be part of the vine? Not just to see the vineyard from afar, or even pluck the clusters, press the wine, but to be grafted in, to feel the stir of inward sap that rises from our root, himself deep planted in the ground of love, to feel a leaf unfold a tender shoot, as tendrils curled unfurl, as branches give a little to the swelling of the grape. In gradual perfection, round and full, to bear within oneself the joy and hope of God's good vintage till it's ripe and whole. What might it mean to bide and to abide in such rich love as makes the poor heart glad? I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me.